Let's party. Sweet. Right, let's go. We're good. Welcome. Everybody, hello. Welcome to Let's Make Art. We do watercolor paintings every week. It's really fun. I'm so glad you're here to paint with us. This is what we're painting today. Say ooh. Ooh. Ah. <sighs> Michael, say ooh, ah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. It'll be fun. Uh, we released a tutorial for this, like just pre-recorded last week. Some of you have already done it, and they look great. So I'm excited to paint this with you. Um, we, if you can, they see both of us. Yep. Okay. We have two people here: me, Sarah Cray, and this is Courtney. Yep. And um, we're here. And oh, it's right there. We're a little slim pickings tonight because it's like the day before Fourth of July, and so like everybody is out of town. And by everybody, I mean the Doan family, because they <laughs> take up like half of, the, half of the people that paint with me. So um, Al's not here tonight. He's off with his family having a great time. Um, so my husband is doing camera work, and I won't make him come say hi, but he's here. His name is Michael. He's wonderful. I'm going to talk back and forth with him. It's going to be great. Um, let's start with our... Oh, so I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think so. Okay. Everybody raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I promise to have fun tonight. I promise to have fun tonight. It's throwing you off. Okay, repeat after me. I promise to have fun tonight. I promise to have fun tonight. I promise to not compare my work. I promise to not compare my work. And I promise to be kind to myself. And I promise to be kind to myself. Thank you. Because as we start to paint, we get really like anxious sometimes and we're afraid and we think that like art has to look this certain way and it doesn't. I'm just guiding you and we're all on different places and different areas. And really the whole thing is it's just about creating. That's all it is. So uh, we just want you to have fun. This is a great time. So I'm going to go over our colors. We have, we have five. Now, I have to tell you guys something. If you watched the tutorial already, you already know this. You saw my little fess up um, that I made. But here's what happened, guys, okay? I painted this painting, and I wrote down the colors that I used. But I forgot one color. So I started to paint this missing one color and it looked really weird and I realized that I forgot to put Norway blue on it. So if you have our subscription box and um, you weren't aware of that, grab Norway blue out of week three or week four. You just need a little swipe to get the blues done for this cactus here. So we have moss green is our green. We have slate blue. This is what I thought you could do it with by itself, but it turns out you can't. It looks really gray <laughs> and not blue. So make sure you have a little bit of Norway blue. We have some in week three and week four. You can just take from, so you'll be fine. And orange and some cherry red. So those are our five. And um, the brushes I'm using today are round six and round two. We have a larger one and a smaller one. Um, larger one just for bigger spaces, smaller one for detail work. I think you have a round four, actually, so I don't need a another six, but it's fine. No problem. If you have a four, you'll be able to do that, too. And the paper I'm using is Canson watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds. It's not, like, the most high-end watercolor paper, but it's honestly what I use for all of my illustrations and all of my work because it's really good quality for the price. So that's what I use, and it's great. Okay. They said the sound is low. Can you hear me better now? My mic is on. I, was, I think I fixed it. Oh, did we fix the sound? Let me know Cherry and Debbie and Laurel. We good? I'm just gonna keep on going. Oh yes, better. Thanks, Faye. Thank you, Faye. Okay, so we're gonna start with our warm-ups here. Go ahead and grab a brush, any brush you want. Okay. Uh, get it wet. And then I always like to like tap it off the side of my glass so it's not like totally dripping as I go. 
And uh, we're gonna start with just a warm up. So grab some color, any color you want. Okay. And we're gonna do our standard warm up, which is our dark to light value wash. Yep. So you get your paint brush, full paint, and then you're gonna make um, like a few vertical lines up and forth. So it's almost like a rectangle. Yep. And then you're gonna rinse your brush, like totally, pat it off to the side, and right where you left off, you're going to kind of smear out the color that way. Yep. And then I'm gonna actually rinse my brush and do it one more time because my lightest value, I want it like barely there. So already just by doing that, I have a nice ombre mm -hmm. or dark to light value. Yeah, that's great, perfect. This is the technique I use most in watercolor. I use it in literally like almost every painting. So, and this is a really simple way to get a nice transition of value. And value is about dark to lightness. Okay. The next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna kind of practice making the cactus shapes because there's a little bit of line work involved and we don't have an outline for this painting, which is fine. That might freak some of you out, but I know you're gonna do fine. So uh, a good way that you can do the, um, like the short round cactuses, like this one here. Can you see that? Okay. Is um, if this helps you, you can do like a, a dot at the top and then another dot kind of below it. Like however tall you want your cactus to be, your squatty cactus, and then however wide your lines go, you're gonna start at the dot and end at the bottom dot. So if I'm doing my squatty cactus, I'm gonna go out to the outside like that. And you can make some adjustments if you wanna round it out. And then my next section, I'm gonna just keep going back and forth on those dots. Okay. Yep. And then when you get to the other side, you're gonna go around the other way. Does this kind of look like a pumpkin? Yes, it does. It's a similar shape. Yeah, that's great. That cactus is just a little bit more narrow, so if you want it to be wider, then you let, then you just, then you just kind of let your edge edges go out, like almost like a half circle. Okay. Like that. And I make my lines nice and thick. And just leave a little silver sliver of white in between and that's almost going to act like the ridges on the cactus yep so just do that a couple of times till you feel comfortable um, if it's easier for you to do it without the dots you can go ahead and try and do it without the dots so i'm just going to go ahead and kind of just do like a half circle and then kind of straighten it up in the middle and then go the opposite way. Now these are gonna kinda look like pumpkin-y or onion-y, but when we add like the spike textures, it's gonna look like a cactus, so don't even stress about it. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. Looks great, looks good. And then the other cactus we're gonna practice really quick is like our standard cactus, you know, like the ones with the arms. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for those ones, I usually like to kind of outline it or draw it, and then I do the line work. So I kind of just do like a tube. Is that a tube, Michael? Is that a tube? That's a tube. <laughs> it's like a tube, right? And then you do little arms, so usually I do the main part of the cactus first, and then I'll draw on little arms. And this is where you can take artistic license, right? Because it all depends on what you like. If you like your cactuses like way more skinnier and taller, make them skinny and tall, you know? Or if you like them kind of more round and shorter. So kind of play with the shapes and see which ones you like more. This painting, you can make those minor adjustments and it's yours and it's not a big deal. It just depends on what style you like a little bit better. So I do the main part of my cactus and then I add the arms. They're just like little things that stick out. 
They have a curve at the top and a little curve at the bottom. Perfect. And then I do my line work after I add the arms. Now my line work, because you know how cactuses have ridges, yeah. right? It's not a totally yeah. smooth thing. That's essentially what we're drawing with our lines here. So um, the lines, I'm going to start at the bottom, and they're all going to kind of gravitate to this center top point of the cactus and kind of just follow the curve. So here's a line, and it pulls to that middle little dot. Great. Great. And you just keep going that across. When you get to the middle, it's going to straighten out a little bit, right? Because it's yeah. in the middle. And then on the other side, it goes the opposite way. And it just pulls to that top center. And then that's how we can tell that the cactus is rounded, just with that line work. And then do the same thing on the arms. You can do those little lines, and they pull towards the center. And on this cactus, you can make your lines thick or thin or both. Um, I usually do a combination. If you want thinner lines, just be really light pressure okay. with your brush, almost like you're barely touching the page. If you want thicker lines, then you press a little bit harder on your brush. Okay. And that's how you get the difference. Yeah. Look at those cactus. They look great. Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we really need to go over, but I think that's it. Hi, Judy. Okay, just seeing if there's any questions, but I think we're good to go. Let's get started. Okay. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to just rip that off. You can keep a scratch paper handy. It's nice to test colors okay. or marks on it. And um, so there's four steps to this painting. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in our blue... Cacti. Is cacti the plural for cactus? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I did it opposite. I think <laughs> when we did a single cactus, I called it a cacti. And then on this one, I called it cactus. It's fine. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Yes, we're good. No problem. So we're going to do our blue cactus cacti first. Then we're going to do our greens. And then we put in the dirt floor to kind of ground our cactus. And then we do the detail work like the spikes and the flowers and the little leaves. Awesome. Okay. Oh, hi, Jenny. Uh, Debbie asked, does it matter if you go up or down with your lines? No. If you want to start at the top and then bring your lines down when you're doing the line work on your cactus, totally fine. Whatever's most comfortable for you. And I think Jenny's family is painting this tonight, so I hope they're having a good time. Hello. <laughs> okay, so for my cactus, the first one I'm going to start with is this, like, this guy right here. This like, I don't know, round thing. So to get that color, I'm gonna pick some slate blue. I'm gonna grab some Norway blue and I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of moss green till I get like this darker, I'm gonna grab a little more blue. Like a dark blue with a hint of green color. There we go. Okay. Now, when you do this cactus, um, I start from the bottom one first. And okay. then as you add the ones on top, um, they're going to get a little bit smaller. See how, like, yeah. see how, like, that's the biggest one, and then they kind of get smaller as you go up? Yep. Yeah. Just keep that in mind as okay. you go. So grab your paintbrush, fill it with paint. I started probably, like, near the center of my page and about... What is that? Two thirds of the way down. Yeah, about right there. Okay. And then you're going to make the bottom part of your cactus and it's circular, but it's not a perfect circle. Okay. On the bottom, it kind of straightens out a little bit. Yep. And after you make that, you kind of just fill it in. And if you, if it's not like perfectly smooth, if you have a little bit of like edges to it, that's fine. These cactuses are all different yeah. shapes and sizes, so you'll find one like that. I promise. Okay. And then uh, we just do, we just layer it from there. Just make sure you get a little bit smaller as you go up. And you can have them coming out like the left side or the different right ways. side, different okay. ways. Kind of have fun with it. Yep. 
And then because this is watercolor and we like that really cool funky texture that we get, what I like to do is I like to just like drop in watercolor droplets okay. or water droplets. And you get some like different textures there. Or if it's still nice and wet, you can drop in color. See, that was just oh, a okay. pure thing of paint that I dropped in right there. So kind of play with it. And it, they tend to like smooth and blend together um, the quicker you work. Okay. Just like that. Nice little, nice little funky cactus here. Yeah, that looks very nice. I'm just gonna do a couple water droplets. They're almost like, have you ever seen those like stones piled on top of each other? Michael knows what I'm talking about. He's <laughs> not in yet. Stacked, stacked stones. Is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, right? They're stacked and they're stones. That's, I feel like that's what it looks like, but I guess it looks more like a cactus and stacked stones, so maybe not. Yeah, see how that cool texture yeah, you're getting that looks, from that? That looks good. I like that. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Then after you do your main cactus, we're gonna do a nice little round guy, that first guy we, we uh, practiced with. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the left and a little bit lower, so it's not on the even ground. And, um, you know, just do it whatever way you feel comfortable. If you want to do the two dots and then do your circles around that, you can. Or if you just want to kind of eyeball it, I usually start on the side way out. Now, with round brushes, what to keep in mind of why they're so great is they have a nice narrow top and a big belly. So you can do a thin line and then make it thick and then back thin again in the same stroke. You just play with pressure. So if you want it to be like kind of narrow at the top, you start soft pressure, then you push down, get a thick stroke, and then you kind of lighten up. Yeah. And just kind of work your way around the cactus. And if you want to drop a little bit of color, I always like to just do a little droplet of color here and there, because I think it makes it interesting. You get those variations. Yeah, that looks really cool. Because this is what watercolor is all about, right? Right, Michael? Correct. Yeah. And you might be worried a little bit about your cactuses right now. Trust me, it's like the same thing with the animals. It's like those finishing details where we do the spikes. People are going to be like, oh, that's a cactus. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. Okay, and then we're going to do one more cactus. And that one's going to be more to the right, maybe up a little bit more, kind of over here. Can they see the reference photo from the top? Cam? Um, yeah. Right there you can, yeah. Okay. I'll leave that there so you guys can see it. And this one I made a little bit taller, so um, I'm just going to go a little bit like more narrow and taller with my okay. marks. Just like that. So that one was just, this one's my little squatty guy, this one's my taller guy. Okay. Drop in some color and just kind of let that bleed out. Yeah, great. Okay. How are you feeling so far, Courtney? Good. I love this. So she came in. We're setting up. I was like, Courtney, have you painted watercolor before? <laughs> She's like, I did your waves. And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> and I just apologized. <laughs> I am so sorry. That was the hardest one. And I did not teach it very well. No, no. It's a blast. <laughs> She's like, it's okay. I still had fun. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> That's great. Because that one was really hard. Okay, and um, 
You guys, we just finished step one. Awesome. That was it. Yeah, it, it's that not was that bad. That was a breeze. So all of these these paintings that you see, it's really just broken down. And once you break it down into these like steps, it's like, oh, this is fine. I'm like, yeah, it's not that bad. Okay, so we're gonna add our green cactus now. We're on to step two. And for the green that we're using, we have this moss green, which is like a really rich green. It's lovely. And remember, this painting is totally yours. So if you want more of a blue green, you can mix a little blue in there. If you want it more of a yellow green, take a little swoop of orange and mix that. See how that turned it? Oh, okay, in. yeah. Like almost a lime green. So I like to kind of have a bunch of different colors going on on my palette, which is why I like this palette because it gives me this whole area to mix. Yeah. And you can just mix the colors as you want them and where you go. So the first cactus I'm going to do is a little, another little round squatty one kind of right next to my first one. I'm going to call this my beach ball cactus, okay? And then um, just kind of right next to it going in the opposite direction. If it runs into this cactus, that's fine. Okay. If there's a bigger space, that's fine too. This is a really kind of loose painting here. Just kind of do it however you want it. And then I'm gonna drop in a tad, touch up the color. So it's okay that it touches this part? Mm -hmm. it will... Yeah, okay. it's okay. 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 And then we're going to do our um, traditional cactus, the standing up one, the Gumby cactus, I think is what Al called it. <laughs> and I'm going to use more of the lime green for that. So I added a little bit of orange to get this. Can they see my palette, honey? Uh, yeah, they can see it, but if you pull it in a little bit closer. Okay, I'm going to pull it in closer so you guys can see. Perfect. Okay, cool. So um, just what you need to keep in mind when we add these cactuses is everything that we add now is going to be behind what we've put down so far. So I'm going to add okay. this cactus right here, but it's going to go behind this one. Okay. And to go behind, um, I know that sometimes is tricky. So all you have to do is I'm going to make my little cactus shape here. And then when I get to the part where I'm where I get to the blue cactus, I'm just gonna lift up my brush, keep that line going, and then when I get to the other side, put it back down. Just like that. Now because watercolor is transparent, um, depending on how dark or light your cactus is, if I kept that line going, you would see it through this cactus, yeah. right? And that would kind of kill the illusion that it's behind it. So if you can, try and lift up your brush when you get to that part and just kind of work behind it. So when I'm adding the arm to this, it's the same thing. I'm going to kind of do my arm, and then when I get to the blue cactus, I'm just going to not touch it, lift up my brush. Yep. And then this other arm, I try not to have them like symmetrical. I try to have one taller and okay. one lower in terms of arms. But at the same time, this is your painting. It's your choice, you know? You can make those choices. I trust you. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Great. And after you have your cactus shape, go ahead and add the lines. Now, I'm going to turn my paper here because it's easier for me to do lines kind of going across than up and down. But whatever is easier for you. Also because my palette's here and I don't want to, like, do that. So I'm just going to move... My paper, you are welcome to do that. It doesn't have to stay totally square the whole time. And as you can see, my greens are changing a little bit in this cactus. I'm fine with that. This is a free painting, you know? And I'm, I've just been using my six this whole time. If you want to do your line work with your two, feel free to. Feel free to use your two. What colors did I mix for the green cacti? Um, I just used the moss green for this one. And then to get this more yellowish green here, Raven, Raven asked that question, yeah. Uh, I just mix a little bit of orange. And so if you want your green to read 
have it more on the yellow side or the warm side at orange. If you want it to read more cool or more blue, add a little bit of blue. Yeah, looks great, Courtney. Awesome. I love it. There we go. Do you want to check in? Yeah, let's check in. Should I just move her painting over to the middle? Which? Yeah, move it to the middle. Okay. So this is Courtney's. She's doing great. I love the shapes of her cactus. This one is nice and narrow. I think this one is great because I feel like it has a lot of movement, which is super cool. And I think she has some great watercolor textures on this blue cactus right here. So whenever you want these kind of, I mean, they almost look like water birds to me. I don't think that's a real term, but it's what <laughs> I say. So if you want those kind of like textures that you see within here, that's just adding droplets of water yeah. and letting it kind of spread and dry. So it's looking really good so far. And you can see we're painting the same thing. Our compositions are pretty similar, but they have different personalities already, and that's exactly what we want. We want awesome. your paintings to be your own. Beautiful work, beautiful work. This one's yours. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you want to sorry. take credit for mine, but there you go. I'm like, Courtney's is better. I'm just gonna switch that on the low down. She's not gonna notice. Nobody will notice, it's gonna be fine. Okay. And then I'm going to do this little um, kind of spiky cactus right here. I'm going to put that there so you guys can see it. So this one is kind of going right next to this blue cactus that we first laid down. I'm just going to use some moss green for this. Maybe mix in a little bit of slate just, just for funsies. And then when you do this one, you're going to be doing the mo movement almost like, you know when you were little and you drew ocean waves? Yes. How they did that like up. Yes. 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 Like that almost scalloped thing. It's essentially the same thing. I'm going to do one half first. So I kind of like go up, back. And then when I get to the top, it's going to get shorter and go more in. Okay. Just like that. And then I do a line down the middle and I fill it in. It almost looks like um, holly. Is that right? Yes. Holly, right? That Christmas. And then I do the same. And you can have as many kind of ocean points as you want. I just did um, two and then it came to the top. But if you want to add a few more in there, go for it. And then I do the other side after I fill it in. So I filled it in. I'm going to do a little water, a few water droplets in mine to get that really cool texture. The water burn, as I like to call it. And then um, I kind of almost mimic that side. Just not. I kind of match the curves side. going out. Okay. So wherever there's a curve going out that way, I do it on the other side. And I leave a nice thin white line in the middle. <clears throat> and then I fill it in. Remember to work, if you run into this blue cactus, just work behind it. Okay. You might not run into it. And then I'm, of course, I'm dropping in some color. I'm dropping in some water just to get those interesting kind of shapes. And then when we get to the top, we almost want it to come to a point here. See how they kind of okay. narrow in at that top? And remember, you can always adjust the shape of your cactus too after you lay it down. You can always okay. add. So it's like, oh, uh, like I want these to come out wider. You just kind of move your paint out a little bit wider if you want. Just like that. I keep, I'm just, my phone's here. I'm checking to see if we have comments. That's what I keep looking at. Okay. Very nice. Courtney, you're doing great. <laughs> you're doing so good. Perfect. This is... It's looking good. Okay, now I'm going to do my other kind of standard cactus. This one's just a one arm guy. And um, I'm going to just do them kind of like right here. So which ones would you mix to do like a true green? If I were to do just two gr true green, I would just use moss green right okay. out of the bottle. Okay. Because this is a pretty good green just by itself. Okay. Okay, yeah. And you can always test 
the color on your scratch. On your paper before. Yeah, okay. before you lay it down if you're okay. not sure. So I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna use moss green for this. I'm gonna do my little cactus coming out here. And it's gonna, it's kind of leaning to the right almost. This one I made a little bit thicker. And then do a little arm, just like that. Then I'm gonna do my line work. And just remember to pull those lines up at the top. And you can do as many lines as you want. Very nice. Just like that. Now, um, the great thing about this painting that I appreciate is it's, it's a little more illustrative. And what that means is like when you do realistic like paintings like the first cactus we did that one was a little bit more realistic and that's because we were really trying to build up form using um, like shading and using highlights and all of that stuff that kind of really made our cactus three-dimensional now when you do a little bit more illustrative like this you don't have to worry about that as much you can just do general shapes general textures and people kind of Get the gist yeah but it's more fun because you get to play with colors i think you can play with shapes you can play with colors you can play with the layout and um it doesn't matter because it's just more about um like the feel of it not necessarily yeah. making sure it's like a cactus that you see in nature so i like and i like mixing up doing it both which is why i put them in our projects because <laughs> i get to decide that kind of stuff okay i'm gonna awesome. do my another my other ocean wavy cactus here on the left hand side okay kind of coming out of my blue one almost and i'm going to add some more orange to get this light green over here and just kind of do those ocean waves And then fill it in. Drop in some water if you want that texture. And then do the other side. And remember to try and mimic where the curves go so it's symmetrical. Fabulous. And just fill it in. Fill it in. Perfect. Now, if you're, because this side is, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna bleed a little. Yeah. So let me pull this to the center so, okay. she, so you guys can see what's going on here. So Courtney added um, her other side of the cactus. It hit this blue part. And because of these watercolors, they really um, activate really easy. Yeah. Which I like. If I were you, I would leave that. Okay. Because I think that's a really cool kind of accidental element. Okay. If you don't like it and you're like, I really don't want that to bleed. I don't want that color in there. You just take up, you pick up your paper towel. Okay. And you just um, kind of dab it on there. Dab it. Okay. And lift that color off. Okay. As it's spread. Okay. So if that bothers you, don't do that. And then I don't know if you guys can tell how um, this side of her cactus is really wet. So if she were to do water droplets on that it's not going to um, move the pigment out like it okay. did on this side. So if you kind of, if you do that water droplet texture, you want to make sure that it's moist, but not like, like puddled okay. on your page. Okay. Cause then the water's not going to do anything. It's just going to stay there cause okay. it's already wet. Okay. But honestly, I think that's really cool. Okay. I would leave that. That's like one of those happy accidents <laughs> that you get <laughs> when painting with watercolor.
Now, if you do have too much water on your cactus and you don't know what to do, you can take your paper towel and just lift up that water, okay. that extra I'm water. I'm gonna try that on the top of this. So that's why I always have a paper towel handy because it's, it. I almost view it as like another brush. You know, it's like with watercolor, water is just as important as the paint and paper towel is just as important as the brushes. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one more cactus kind of coming off this side. I'm gonna stay in my yellow green um, color and it's gonna be the same, that first one we did, it's that same kind of idea. Okay. It's kind of coming off over here though. It's gonna be going this way. And as you can see, my painting is already kind of differing from this example. That's fine. Don't stress about that, you guys. This is your painting, it's not a huge deal. And especially with this one where it's really kind of like, um, like an illustration, it doesn't have to be exact. So as you can tell, it's almost like they're gathered in the center and they almost like splay out a little bit. They're not standing like totally straight up and down. You can drop in some green. Let's see if anybody has questions. If anybody has questions, let me know. I did a little color droplet here and there. Yeah. Okay. How's everyone feeling so far? I'm feeling really good. Yeah, this is... You feeling good? Absolutely. This is... It's Anyone could do this. So good. <laughs> I love all the different colors. I think that's what I almost love most about this painting is like there's so many different variations of blue and green within it. It's just really exciting to me. Okay, we only have two tiny little cactuses to do and then we're going to move on to step three. And that's like it. So as you can see here in my example, I have these little cactuses here in the background. Now two things you're going to notice about them. One is they are lighter in value, which means if you go back to our exercise that we did, this is the lighter value side, this is the darker value. And the reason why we do that is we just want it to be clear that it's farther away yeah. in space. That's how we kind of communicate to our viewer that something is farther away, is we make it light in value. If we made it like really, really dark, it would kind of come up to the front. Yeah. So I'm gonna do kind of like, a bluish cactus and to make it lighter in value I'm just gonna add water so almost on my palette here I'm just adding water till I get this really kind of light color sorry I use the sides of my palette too, no to, that's awesome to mix I just like go crazy okay so once you added water to the color so it's like really, really light, almost like it's barely there. I'm gonna do that same kind of round shape. So you see how light that is? Yeah. That's exactly what we want because that's gonna push it farther away from us. So it's the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of do my beach ball cactus. I'm not gonna paint in front of my big green cactus. We want it to be behind it. But yeah, we, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add water droplets. I'm not gonna add paint droplets, I'm gonna let that just be light and be in the back to show that it's farther away. And same thing on this other cactus that we're doing that's kind of in between here. Really light color, I'm just gonna do a, a light green. I'm gonna kind of go in between here. Just kind of add these little just like that. And automatically, just by having it light, the blue and the green look closer to us and this green is pushed back and that's just because we did a lighter value. Technical term, atmospheric perspective. Consensus on the internet is that this is much easier than McCoy. <laughs> <laughs> that coy, you know what? They turned out great though. 
Every I was looking through in the email that we sent out, and I hope you guys get our emails because I kind of put the koi submissions on there or the week's submissions, and I think they looked great, but it was a little bit harder. Um, I think the shading, that first step, putting that shadow in, I think that's where people, I freaked people out a little bit, but they really did look great. I loved them. Did you see our koi? I didn't. Corny. <laughs> <laughs> they turned out so good. Okay, so after you put in those light cactuses, we're done with step. Two. We're done with our cactuses. Like that's it, you that, guys. Yeah, that's that's easy. all we gotta do. So great. Diane says she's enjoying this. Oh, I'm so happy. Great, Diane and Debbie. Can't wait to see how yours turn out. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step three. We're like halfway done with our painting. We're gonna put in our ground, our dirt. Now here's the wonderful thing about brown, is you basically just mix like all of the colors and you get a brown. Okay. Brown is like one of those things. So you, we want to start with mixing complementary colors. And if you have a color wheel at home, complementary colors are the ones that are opposite on the color wheel. So red and green, blue and orange, purple and yellow. Those are complementary colors. You mix those, you get a nice dark brown blackish color. Now we don't have exact complementary colors here because we're using pink instead of red, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take some pink, I'm gonna take some green, and just in the middle, see how I have oh, that brown yeah. already? That's just a swoop of cherry, a swoop of moss, just like that. Awesome. Now if you're, if you're mixing your brown and it's reading too red or, or too pink, add some more green in there. If it's reading too green, add some orange or add some cherry in there and okay. that's going to kind of um, color it up but yeah easy peasy just like that okay so I have my brown and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of start by making these underlines underneath the first like the cactuses that are at the on the bottom of my painting almost like a shadow. So I'm just gonna kinda like cup them with the brown. And then it's similar to our warm up where I put that color in and then I rinse my brush and I just spread it. Just like that. And remember to go up too. Cause this painting we wanna communicate that um, the cactuses aren't on one stagnant line that are just kind of stood up. We want to communicate that there's like depth, right? And so how to do that is you just keep the ground going. So just by adding water, using a damp brush, I'm kind of just moving this brown up through my painting. And then as I get to the outside, I'm basically just using water to spread because I want kind of like the edges to be really light. You might get a couple bleeds in there. That's fine. I embrace those. And then I'll go back in after I do that. And while it's still wet, add in um, a little bit of shadows here on the cactuses. And this part can be really loose and fast. Don't feel like it has to be kind of like, you know, super perfect. Sometimes it's easier the faster and looser you work. So I'm just kind of spreading this out. Very nice. And by like kind of spreading, and when you spread, sorry, I should have said this earlier, I like to use the side of my brush because I get a larger area to color. Okay. So if I'm just using the top of my brush and like the very tip to spread, I'm gonna get these thin lines. I'm not gonna cover as much surface area as I want. Yeah. So usually I lay the color in and then like just use the side of my brush to spread it. And then now that way I get a nice thick area that I'm covering. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
there you go and just keep kind of spreading that out and then as it travels like up into my cactuses I'm having it get kind of lighter so almost if you're looking at just the dirt it gets it starts light and then as it goes towards the center it's going to get darker so we want the very edges of our dirt here to be a very soft, light wash. And then it's going to get um, stronger in color in the middle. Now by spreading this color out, you're going to get some cool watercolor textures. Like here I have some really interesting things going on. I like to leave those. Yeah, that looks, that looks really cool. Because most of the time they're accidental, which I think is a really cool element to watercolor. And I think it just kind of adds something to your painting. Now, if it's too distracting to you, you can always take a damp brush and try and um, kind of rub those lines out if you don't like those kind of different line textures. I'm not going to do that to mine because I like, because I like mine. Yeah, it's looking good. So after you put in your dirt, that's it for our dirt. After you put that in, we're done with step three. We only have the details left. Awesome. So, and really, I always leave the details for last. And I feel like that's what really kind of finishes off your painting, brings it all together. I know that when we do animals, they really look super funky until we do <laughs> the... the the last the details. Yeah, like when we did the bunny, we didn't do the whiskers and the eyes last. And the whole time people are like, I don't know about I don't this. Know. I'm like, trust me, you just gotta keep with it. <laughs> Very nice. Sorry, yeah. I think we may have lost Facebook. Did we lose Facebook? Oh, yeah, we did. We're still on YouTube though, right? YouTube. <laughs> you guys are great. What's up, honey? <laughs> well, I'm watching. <laughs> it's working on it? Oh no. No, it's not. No, it ended. Did the feed just quit? Yeah, Facebook just died. On the computer? Yeah. Or just connected to that? No, it's on here somewhere. Let me see if I can post from here. How's your dirt? Oh, it's looking cool. I feel like my biggest issue is <laughs> like, like you were saying about doing it fast. That yeah. is way better because it, it'll dry and yeah. then it doesn't so blend as well. Yeah, you know? exactly. So if you do it like quick, I'm just going to blend these out a little okay. bit for you. Yeah, if you, because if you wait for it to dry, then when you add the water to spread it out, it's not going to spread as easy. Yeah. It's going to kind of stay in that place and not going to want to spread. All right, Sarah, what should we do? I mean, I don't, I don't know why it's not connecting on Facebook. Should you log out and log back in maybe? Yep. It'll be fine. Yeah, so when you like do this, do that, and then like right away. So you see how I did all my darks at once? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that definitely. And then that way makes you get a more difference. natural kind of spread. Now any luck, honey? No.
That is how. <laughs> He's gonna be like, what the heck? <laughs> People on YouTube? I'm so sorry. Just, we're almost there. There. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can talk about. No, I just puked out of my room and kept comments and it just like said that you landed. Okay. People on YouTube. I'm still here. It's just still that go button button is right out. I'm gonna add a little bit more shadows to mine. Did logging back in help, honey? No. <laughs> this is fun. And you know what? I'm gonna do a little shadow on this cactus back here. Since I can see the bottom of them. Why not? Now, if we were to just do the dirt, like right here on this bottom I'll line. Quit painting stuff. Well, I'm not painting. Just have a nice combo. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. So, Courtney, um, you know, <laughs> tell me, tell me about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh <man. laughs> You are how old? I am 24, 24, 25 this year. Okay. Yes. Have you ever really been interested in art? It's always been an interest of mine. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. I've taken very seriously, mm -hmm. but I love crafts and yeah. that creative type yes. stuff. Yes. Stuff. DIY projects, oh, that yeah. sort of thing. But my extent of art has been high school art classes okay that will probably be it you know, that's actually my high school art class is what like gave me vision for what I wanted to be when I grew up because I always liked art always yeah. was interested in it and um, I didn't take my first art class till I was a senior in high school I just kind of just really did it like on my own and um, I was in I just went to art too because it worked for my schedule and the teachers like you're you'll be fine yeah. skipping art yeah. one so I just was in art too, and he would basically just like present the project and then leave us alone for two weeks and do it. And literally the two weeks, he would just like play jokes on the class. Like he had like a fake spider that while you were painting, he would like put it on a string and like oh dangle my. it. And I was just watching him one day and he was like, he totally freaked out this girl with that fake spider. And I was like, I can do this job. Like yeah, I had yeah. no idea what I wanted to be. It was one of those things where I'm like, I don't know what I want to be when yeah, I grow up. I have yeah. no idea what I'm going to do. And then, like, watching him, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I could be a high school art teacher. I'm like, this is great. I have a path. So that's what got me started on that. Awesome. So that's I majored so in cool. art with the intention of doing the credential program after I graduated. Okay. Like a single subject credential yeah. program. And then um, I kind of just started selling my stuff on my own. And... Um, it worked out to where I just became like a freelance illustrator. That's awesome. So it's almost kind of like I'm right. being a teacher, but not uh, through well. high school. Yeah, not in the exact way you. Not the exact picture, way, but it's still but... that like, it's still there. Yeah. Absolutely. Any luck, honey? Uh, we're sending that to YouTube. Oh, okay. That's all right. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is this is perfect for you then. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> so what you're so saying perfect. is you love this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is so fun. It's easy. I love the watercolors part of it. I love watercolors. In my head, when I did the waves, I was like, oh, well, I'll be able to have this cute little thing in frame. And then at the end, I was like, oh, wait. I have better hopes for this, so. <laughs> Those, 
it was so funny because it, it honestly changed how we like did everything because before I kind of just like I would I would teach how I painted it how I painted it yeah and because I have that art background I don't have to like break things up I yeah. just kind of make decisions as I go mm-hmm. and then after that water painting I'm like I can't teach that way anymore because it's yeah. really confusing for yeah. people following along who are not familiar with <laughs> art. And so me and Al are like, okay, we're going to have steps and we're going to do a pre-recorded tutorial and we're going to break it down so nobody will get lost and we'll yeah. be all on the same page. Yeah. And I think that actually was one of the best decisions we made because I feel like people feel a bit more successful now and yeah. I'm no, more confident great. in teaching it. Totally. And but <laughs> I wonder if we should just like take that video down, <laughs> just like pretend that never happened, and be like, "I'm sorry, sorry, not that one." <laughs> we good? Oh, we on YouTube? Friends, yeah. we're back. We're back. Something went down with Facebook. It wasn't us for like the first time. We did everything <laughs> right. I think Facebook just like kind of tootled away on our life but if you're on youtube we're so happy to have you if you've been with us on youtube the whole time you've been hearing some great conversation between courtney and i (laughs) and i hope you are thoroughly entertained okay we just finished step three we put in our dirt we put in our ground so hopefully your cactuses or cacti feel grounded they're in space they're not just floating anymore we're good to go now We just do the fun stuff, which is the detail stuff. So I'm gonna switch to my round two. And we're gonna add things like spikes and flowers and the little leaves that are kind of coming out of places. So I'm taking my round two. And I'm gonna do the spikes on my blue cactuses first. Now, the only thing you really need to remember is when you're doing detail lines, you just wanna make sure that whatever color you're using, that the value is darker when you do it so that way it shows up. Okay. So if I try to do light value spikes on this cactus, it's not going to show yeah, up. Yeah. So just make sure I'm just going to grab pretty much just slate blue here so it's a nice darker color. And then my cactuses are just little spikes that are kind of more random. Now I know some of you and Jenny Doan, if you're watching, I know you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to make them like patterned almost where they're perfectly like symmetrical and you know all of that we don't want that we don't want like perfect spikes going everywhere we want it kind of more random a few going off the side because that just reads more true to how we see things in nature so kind of here sometimes I do little like V ones where there's like two coming out of one little hole you can picture that So it's kind of just here and there. The spikes are kind of going um, in random directions, right? We don't want them all going just straight up and down because that might not read as spikes. And some of them are a little bit thinner. Some of them are longer. We got all different spikes here. All spikes are welcome in our little cactus. Okay, so I did my little spikes on my cactus here. Now I'm gonna move to my squatty ones. Now my squatty ones, I'm gonna kind of just do like V spikes okay. um, down kind of like the center of these colored sections. So like little V, V, V. And you can do them as small or as big as you want. I kind of started off big and then I'm like, oh, I don't like that as much. So I turned them small. Now, am I going to worry about those big ones that I started with? No. Because this is just a little illustrative painting, very loose. You don't have to stress. And kind of just keep making your way around your cactuses, putting in these spikes. And then after you do your blue, 
you move on to your green. Now for these, um, these kind of my, my ocean wave cactus that I'm calling them, my water waves, I'm not doing spikes all the way like through them. I'm only doing tiny little um, spikes on the corners here, on the oh, ones okay. that poke out. So just little ones that way. And then when I get to my Gumby cactuses, I'm just going along the lines. Now I'm not gonna do spikes going up and around every line. As you see here in the example, they're kind of just here and there. Okay. They're more random. If we were to go and do spikes on these on every single line, it would almost kind of flatten our cactus a little okay. bit. It would be a little bit too much going on. So we're just gonna kind of do them in sections, in areas, random, here and there. We want to give the idea of the spike texture without having to go in and do every single line. Yeah. How are we doing on YouTube? YouTube side. I can't see the comments from YouTube, so if people have questions, I can't see them. <laughs> Now when I get to this little cactus that's back here, the one that's super light in value, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of texture spikes on there, but like also keep them, keep them light. I added water to my mixture, so they're there, but they're like still very soft, still very light in value. So you can see them, so we know that they have a spiky texture, but it's not distracting us, it's not pulling it to the front. Do my little spikies off here. And this guy up front. Looks so good. Awesome. So just go through. I think I added the spikes oh, on this dark green one. So on the super dark green one, if you want to add spikes, I didn't in my example, but I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to actually mix that brown that I made with more green, and that's just going to turn it into a darker green for me. So hopefully it will kind of show up a little bit on my cactus. Very nice. Mm, I love all the different one. watercolor textures you got, especially on that cactus right there. That looks great. Let's see it. I want to show you guys. So this is Courtney's, <clears throat> and I just think she has like super interesting watercolor textures in within her cactus. She really embraced, and this is the hard thing with watercolor, is yeah. sometimes when you first start painting, you, it's hard to embrace the water element of it. You almost are using watercolors so thick that they look like regular paint yeah, and not watercolor. Yeah. But it's when you really embrace how it bleeds together and how it moves and mm -hmm. how you get those interesting lines, that's when you get some really cool watercolor works. And you can tell just by how light her value is, these little variations through here, that she was just like, I'm just adding water and I'm spreading <laughs> it. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So great job, Courtney. That's Thank really you. the hardest thing. When I first did watercolor, you could not tell that they were watercolor because I was so used to using acrylic that I would just pick it up like it was acrylic and you couldn't even tell. And then my teacher's like, you have to embrace the water yeah. of watercolor. And I'm like, oh, oh, I've been using this wrong the entire time. <laughs> okay, I added my spikes. So my cactuses, they're nice and pointy. I'm gonna do my flowers. This is where our cherry red comes in. So 
And this one you can just paint right on top. Cherry red is a pretty dark color. So I'm just gonna go over and do my flowers. Now for my flowers, they're just kind of like curved lines similar to our um, beach ball cactuses, except they don't connect at the top. Okay. So it's kind of like splayed out, splayed out, splayed out, splayed out, like that. Just little bursts of flower. Yep, yeah. Oh dear. And you can thicken the bottom a little bit. But just kind of go with that kind of rounded shape. Yeah. Now the great thing about watercolor too is you get different colors just by adding water. So yeah. I'm going to add a little bit of water and get a really nice light pink. And I'm going to do a light pink flower on top of this one. So this is the same color right here. It came from the same paint, but just by adding water, we get like a nice little soft pink. It's pretty cool. Do another soft pink one over here. Okay, that's it for our flowers. That's it. Okay, we're just gonna do our orange leaves. So as you can see here, and this is also the fun part of why illustration um, is cool, is I added these orange leaves. Now, would you see this in nature, like random orange leaves poking out of cactuses? No, you probably wouldn't. But I think it added to my painting, it kind of filled in the white um, kind of areas that seem a little bit bare. So I just picked my orange up and I just did little leaves coming out the side. Now when I do leaves, I like to start with my top leaf first. I just kind of draw and then fill it in. And then I do my stem, light pressure so it's a nice thin line. And do leaves on either side, going down. So I'm gonna do a couple of those kind of coming out and around. So I do my top leaf first, just try and make them kind of curved and then pointed. Okay. And then I do my stem. And then I do leaves on either side. Now these ones are kind of gonna kind of run into each other. That's okay. And you have total creative freedom on this. I'm gonna add another little leaf coming out over here. like that. I did like a nice little soft one just by adding water I get a lighter orange kind of right in the middle here and I'm going to turn my paper so I don't put my wrist right in my oranges that I just painted and this one's kind of coming out over here on the side. Now I did this one lighter because we want it to feel kind of further away kind of behind everything and that way it's not super distracting from what we have going on already. And then this is a little bit farther apart in this painting, so I'm gonna do another orange leaf stem coming out here, just to kind of fill in that white gap. And then a couple more on the side. We're focused now. Yeah. <laughs> it's the detail work, so a little bit more quiet. Now remember if you want to make your orange lighter, just add water. Or if you want it to have kind of like a green tint to it, just add a little bit of green. <laughs> that was maybe a little self-explanatory, but it's fine. Oh, 
Okay. I'm done. I did my leaves. They filled in my white spaces. You can do a little bit more. And this is, I mean like, this is why I like doing florals and botanicals or whatever, because you can really use leaves as a tool to kind of fill in space. It's mm -hmm. a nice little here and there. Okay, we are done. I'm gonna add a little bit of whoa. Whoa. According I'm not down. angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we ready to show him? How are we showing him, my dear? Michael, I'm talking to you. You are just going to hold them up in front of you to this camera. Oh, okay, cool. So here's mine. Here, I'm gonna rip it off so you guys can see it. Okay. There you go. Okay. Like this? Yep, all the way up. Beautiful. Look how good they are. Let me see yours, Courtney. Ah, oh, they look so good. Great job, everybody. Okay. Yeah, this is this is awesome. Yeah, this was so fun. Thank you so much. So sorry about losing you on Facebook. Um, but if you're still with us on YouTube and you switched over, um, I would love to see your paintings. You can just go back on that Facebook that was live and post them on there because people like to look and okay. comment. I've noticed that people have been kind of liking and complimenting and it's awesome. really important to share your work. I know it's so scary. It totally is scary. <laughs> You're like putting yourself out there, but people love it because one, people love art and then people also love it when they see other people be vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely. gives them the courage to also be vulnerable. So please share it. I would love to see it. Um, you can post it on Facebook or if you do it on Instagram, you can tag us in it. Our Instagram name is let's go make art or, and the hashtag name for this one is desert cactus. I know that's not technically correct because it's cacti, but we're going with it. That's what I wrote on the project. So we're fine. So share it on Instagram, share it with us. We would love to see it. Oh, next week. Ready? Ready? Yes, yes. This is what we're doing. Our amethyst. That's pretty. Super beautiful. This is all about value work. It's super fun. Um, if you have our kits, you should have the outline for that already. The tutorial for this will release tomorrow so you can paint it before. If you want to paint it before our live. And I think that's everything. Right? Yeah. Perfect.